LookingAngles.com continuous coverage of VMworld Live 2010 on the scene at the Moscone Center South with special guest Pat Gelsinger from EMC, the president, uh, former Intel 30-year veteran. Pat, welcome back to theCUBE, back with the bloggers, a little upgrade from our last uh, gig, don't yeah, you think? Yeah. Good, <laughs> you guys made it to the big time, man, yeah, you're okay. VMworld, nice. VMworld's rocking here in VMware. So, uh, Pat, back back at the cube, we'll go. And we know you're really busy. So, so uh, you've been at uh, v uh, EMC now for almost a year. What, what's it like there? And you just acquired Green Plum. Uh, you know, you've been busy since we last met. So, tell us quick update what you're doing. Uh, the one year is coming up, and you got Green Plum under your belt. Mm -hmm. What does all this mean for EMC? And then we'll talk about the keynote. Okay. So, well, you know, overall, you know, I think things are going on schedule if you think about it that way. You know, we said in coming into it, we had certain agendas that we wanted to implement at EMC, and those are well underway. You know, we did product announcements last week uh, that we'll talk, you know, that uh, I'll cover in my super session today. Uh, we've uh, said we're going to be acquisitive, right? We did Archer earlier in the year. We just did Green Plum. VMware's continued their acquisitive nature. They announced two acquisitions this morning. Uh, you know, personally, you know, I said we were, we were going to be a disruptive entity in the industry, and uh, VMworld, you know, 17,000 people, EMC World this year, our best ever. So overall, we're really feeling the momentum, the excitement of the industry. Uh, EMC is a great place to do it, and obviously with, uh, you know, the turbocharged VMware, it's a great partner to have in play. Wait. Well, well, I think, I think we, we went, went to school, school at, at the, the feet of Professor, Professor Moritz, Moritz this morning, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, Paul, Paul took the first part of the keynote to really lay out a view of the future, right? right the layering of IT, what's, what's going to happen in terms of this major new consumption, consumption model of IT as we move to the cloud, this IT as a service model, right? He laid out key strategic directions for uh, things like uh, security. Right, and how that starts to implement through the, the V-Shield directions. Also, this model of IT as a service for IT as well as for service providers, the key partnerships there. So, you know, a major delivery through the Redwood technology uh, that they did. Uh, and, uh, and then Herod followed it up with, uh, you know, some of the substance to, you know, showing the clear, tangible progress against the directions that Paul was describing. Yeah, and very consistent with a lot of the things you've been talking about sort of in preview fashion for it's the last like several months. It's like we worked months. together. Yeah, geez, yeah, shocking. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? How it's just sort of coincidence comes together at the last minute like that. I just love it. So, Pat, we talked we talked at EMC World. Well, storage is sexy, and that went that went over real well. Since then, M and A has been off the charts, sizzling hot storage. Um, now we're here, and and what we're seeing is proof points. Um, and you've done some things with Green Plum. Talk about what it all means in terms of proof points. What proof points do you see that absolutely establish the reality of cloud and that this is a mandate going forward as a future architecture, whether it's developers, mobility, and, and talk about those proof points. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, let, let's be careful. I, I don't want to be too, while I am going to answer your question, I don't want to get too far ahead of my skis in the sense that there's still a lot more cloud washing than there is cloud substance. And uh, you know, if you go back to the uh, theme, right? Uh, you know, uh, virtual, uh, you know, you know, virtual roads, actual clouds, right? Trying to say there is some substance to it, but still, there's a lot of visionary directions here. You know, that said, right, as part of the uh, V Cloud uh, partner program that Paul described today, you know, these customers, these partners, are putting up real cloud offerings today, and those are becoming very real. Things like V Cloud Director real tools to implement those in place. Real customers, like the Levi's example there, who they're implementing this and what they do. Yeah, we had uh, Tom Peck on down at uh, Sapphire, at CIO yeah, Levi's, great yeah, story there. Yeah, and uh, you know, I met with uh, customers like Telstra yesterday, right. who is absolutely implementing services and delivering them to enterprise clients. So I think that we've clearly, in the hype cycle, Right. You know, the hype rate right, is often well in excess of the reality, and I think that's been the case for the last two years. And now we're seeing in that hype cycle that the reality is starting to build where real customers, real services, real applications are being deployed against this cloud model and sort of the mantra that we've been laying, yeah. Yeah. and we're seeing increasing industry momentum saying, yes, indeed, we all need to rationalize our products, our services, against that cloud strategy as well. So, I mean, you've seen a lot of inflection points in your day, as have we. <laughs> where do you see this one rating based on, in the context of what you just said, the, the whole cloud computing inflection point? Is it bigger than all the previous ones, in your opinion, or still remains to be seen? Well, uh, any anybody making such a prediction, right, you should think twice about, right, you know, the their validity of their claims. That's us. But I think there's two aspects to it that I think indicate that it could be bigger than anything before. You know, the first one is just the industry is bigger, right? IT, and as the economy has grown, and IT has grown as a percent of the economy, we're just big now, 
and IT truly is just a huge sector of the economy, and particularly for you know United States, right, Silicon Valley area. You know, this is our agenda for the world. So as the economy's bigger, and secondly, this is disruptive in multiple dimensions of the industry. It changes the infrastructure, it changes the application model, it changes the service model, it affects service providers, it affects system integrators. Many of the prior changes were not as disruptive across all of the strata of the industry. So because it's bigger, because it is more influential across all dimensions of the industry, I believe, and certainly you know, as Joe has talked about, Joe Tucci, our CEO, has said this is the biggest. How big? I don't know, but yeah. this one feels like, you know, this is a tsunami class wave if I was a surfer. Yeah, Joe's famous wave slide. Yeah. We, had, we had Microsoft on yesterday, who's actually here, but they can't really show anything. Um, and we talked about them, about their hypervisor. I asked a specific question about, are, is the PC error reached the, the glass ceiling, the bloated PC, chained to the desk, the PC-centric view? You've lived that generation. It's not so much that it's irrelevant, it's just that it's changing. Yeah. And, and we're in a new era. So what VMware is putting forth with this architecture and some of the things you've been working on, you have a platform and you have agnostic devices. That really changes the game on this PC-centric. I mean, what mm -hmm. do you see on the, on the, on the user-centric side, the key uh, variables in, in the industry? Well, I think, uh, you know, number one, uh, any of these waves, right, you know, I predicted in 1990 the end of the mainframe. Right, 20 years later, it still hasn't quite gone away. Right, in that sense, it's not like these waves become the death of all prior. But you did some damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did great over there. When it, it changed it, but it doesn't like immediately eliminate those prior technologies. Right. But the nexus of innovation, the foci of the industry's new capabilities, productivity, applications, is shifted. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us today would say the PC, right, isn't that foci of innovation. Hey, lots of apps are using it. Using, you know, hey, I am much more productive on my laptop than I am on iPad or iPhone or a Droid. I mean, you know, I just, you know, just much more productive in that sense. But, you know, I can't carry my laptop around in my pocket. Right? Clearly, we're seeing the shift of innovation, new application models, new consumer-centric uh, usage models, both the devices and the applications. And I think as Steve Harrod's uh, keynote talked about very much, hey, I want an app store-like thing for my enterprise applications, right, where you see much much of yeah. that consumerization coming to corporate IT uh, as well. So it has shifted, the right? Applications, usage models will be device independent, right? They will become more consumer focused and essentially, you know, let's just say, they're going to be more iPhone-like, right? And how we get yeah. them and consume them. At, uh, at uh, Orlando, we, we sat down and we, we chatted about, had a great chat in, at the Cube in Orlando. I asked you a question about apps and infrastructure and I asked you specifically, are apps leading the way and showing the infrastructure? And you answered, uh, no, infrastructure is always was a leading indicator to apps, but apps seem to have more momentum. What is the VMware announcement today? How does that shape that, that thesis that you mentioned? I mean, obviously, it looks like more enablement at the software level. What can you share with that? Because that really was a great point, and I want to bring that out again. Yeah, yeah, and the point I made there was, hey, you know, we, you know, us infrastructure hardware guys, right, we create capabilities, and then the apps guys come in and use them inefficiently and poorly, but to enable new things. It's sort of that, you know, that gap Right, of capability in the infrastructure that then gets filled in by application vendors. And I still believe fundamentally that's the case. You, you don't write apps for infrastructure that doesn't exist yet. You, know, you can't run an applications business that way. So our job as the infrastructure guys is always to create these new gaps, these new vacuums for the app guys to come and fill in. And I think everything we're seeing is very much that case where all of a sudden there's lots of performance that's easily, readily available. You know, think about how easy it is to deploy a VM today. Right, literally, you know, if I would have had to go provision things, buy some new servers, get ports allocated, get a network reroute, you know, build up a new storage infrastructure, it might be months for me to allow a major new application to occur. Literally what, now, a few clicks. What do, you, what do you see in the VMware announcement today, given what you guys are doing and at the app level, as the core enabler, the disruptive enabler that's going to really tip that over in terms of the innovation. Yep. Is there anything new there? Well, I think there are two aspects to it. You know, if we take the Redwood, the vCloud director kind of thing, it really is this idea of being able to rapidly, with essentially no cost, be able to create new virtual data center infrastructure, be able to do it with a security model, with policy-based capabilities, with the provisioning environment and the management environments go with it. That is way profound, right? The second thing is all, of, all the things about Spring. 
right, is not just being able to do infrastructure more rapidly, it's not just encapsulating existing applications, it's also enabling a new developer model for tomorrow's applications as well. And that is truly, right, thrilling to anybody who's doing enterprise application development. Yeah, some of the CIOs we had on were saying that they actually bench themselves against the cloud service providers. Do you see those two worlds, the, the cloud service providers and big IT coming together, or do you see the cloud service providers always having an edge over big IT? Well, I think there's an aspect to that that, you know, it's not, our job is to make the infrastructure as efficient on both sides of that equation as possible. So that an IT guy isn't making the decision based on cost, he's making the decision based on business relevant factors. You know, this is something, hey, you know, I need to guarantee compliance in this application. This is a business critical infrastructure element for me. I'm going to run it on my infrastructure, but I know the cost of doing so is still highly efficient. I might federate it with an external service. Right? I might do test and dev externally, and when that's done, I might bring it internally. I might use federation of outside compute capacity so that I don't need to build for peak, I build for average, and I spill over to rent VMs at quarter close or month close. I might say, boy, I want to actually be able to take advantage and federate with some of my key customers or channel partners or business partners I'm going to have. And I'd actually be able to them to be able to view me as their service provider. Right, so hey, just operate and utilize my applications right, as one of my business partners as well. And that's really the power of the vision that we're laying out. It's not public versus private, it's public and private, and allow them to be federated together into hybrid services that give you the best of both worlds in a seamless, uh, uh, agile manner. Uh, Pat, the M&A activity's been hot. You did a uh, Green Plum acquisition. EMC bought Green Plum, which is a uh, nice acquisition. And, a uh, great acquisition. Great. It's not nice. <laughs> nice. Come on, this is a okay. great yeah. acquisition. Okay. That is a great team. It was, it was amazing. Closer to the application heads. Absolutely. Game changing <laughs> acquisition by EMC Green Plum. Very good. Welcome to the Cube, third time. Uh, we, treat, we treat our guests nicely. Um, so it's hot. So, so t the horses are on the track. I tweeted that and said, hey, everyone's out on the track right now. The big guys, Oracle, EMC, NetApp. So talk about what's happening. Why is the M&A activity so hot? Is it an indicator of the fact that people have to retool faster? Is it an activity that they're behind? Is it activity that they need to move faster? All of the above. What is your view on that? And you know, what's next in M&A? Well, I think it's uh, a couple of different factors are at work. And one is, if you show up at my super session uh, later today, you know, one of my slides is the three views of the cloud, right? The Uber cloud model, the Googles, Amazons, I'll call it the vertical cloud model, HP, IBM, and then I'll call it the virtual cloud model, EMC, <laughs> VMware, right? You know? yeah. And of course, you're, right, we contrast those three. And what we're seeing, I would say, is those business models, those industry structures, those strategic frameworks are driving the consolidation of all of the medium and small players into one of those pictures. So I think you can look at that lens and say everybody is taking M&A acquisitions to better implement and solidify their view of that strategy of these three different views of the cloud. So right, one is it's industry structure that's going on. Second is, you know, after the downturn, everybody's coming out of it cash rich. Right, you know, yeah. you know, people got money to spend. Yeah. This right is the time way, to do it. Right, you know, in that sense. And, you know, so, right, there is a clear, right, earnestness to people saying, okay, right, I could pay dividends, I could buy back shares. Boy, that's pretty innovative strategy, isn't yeah, yeah, it, yeah. right? Yeah, or yeah, let's right. go start, you know, you know, taking more aggressive steps. I think it also indicates that there are only so many exciting assets available. Right, you know, good assets that people could take actions on. So, yeah. you know, in any buyer and seller market, right, prices get crazy when there's more buyers than there are sellers. Like a three bar. Yeah. Yeah. People who followed your career know that you at Intel, you were very pro ecosystem, and we just had some VCs on yesterday, top VCs in cloud, talking about how hot it is, and they're looking for startups, not the angel stuff, but like real money, real real technology. Uh, talk about the, the ecosystem that's emerging in the startup community, because some, there are guys developing new cool stuff, mm -hmm. that very cloud centric. That's yeah new. So yeah. talk about your view there and what you see and what your general opinion is. Well, I think like any of uh, uh, these waves, there isn't just the wave of what goes on in terms of what the big guys do, right? There's new university research that's going on and some of that's exciting. Yeah. Uh, there's also uh, then the venture community, right? And with this wave, you know, it is so disruptive. It changes c consumer computing, new consumer devices, new consumer applications, new enterprise infrastructure, new enterprise applications. And you know, so all of a sudden, we're seeing a new round of dramatic VC activity 
uh, again. And they're not going into you know startups that are building ASICs and semiconductors sort of right grew up, and sort of saying, let's go build new infrastructure components, new applications that live on this new model. And virtualization. And yeah, absolutely. It's all riding this cloud virtualization trend. And you know, it's just it's stunning. You know, 17,000 people at VMworld. <laughs> Right. Dave, I, I, have one, I have one final question. I know you, I know you want to get a final question. Actually, in. let me get my final question okay. first, and then you close. I'll give you the last word. So you've been spending a lot of time in New England lately. Do you, do you like it there? Are you going you gonna to move east? Or well, we've can we pry a, you out of here? We've taken a second home. Oh, fantastic. So we're half time, and my wife is actually loving this bi-coastal. A couple weeks here, a <laughs> couple weeks there, back and forth. You know. Excellent. Foot, football season starting. Absolutely. You know, we'll make Patriots, your Patriots fan. Right, yeah, you know, hey, it. you know, maybe the Red Sox still have a shot at that, yeah. uh, you <laughs> yeah. know, that final uh, wild card berth. <laughs> right. right you know. So we had some readers point out on the blog that uh, Pat Gelsinger has the same exact track that Joe Tucci had. COO, president. CEO. Anything you want to announce uh, you, here? You want uh, you uh, <laughs> want to say anything? Any <laughs> CEO? The, I have no announcements. No. <laughs> this, uh, subject, Pat, so. it's great. Uh, Thanks uh, so much, uh, Cube. I know pleasure. you're super busy and coming on the show. Hey, always great. love you guys. Thank hey, you very thanks, much. Pat. Great to have very you. Good. Thanks. Thank bye bye. We'll be right back.